So I did a stupid, I, uh, I did a Caleb and made a lot more work. I think I'm most excited about this episode because the weeks of work finally pay off, get to see it come together. But if you've been watching close, you might have realized that there's two things I should have done before this point that I haven't yet. So let's get to that. Here are the bottom of my feet, or well, the table's feet. And this is where the feet are gonna go in the feet, this hole. Anyway, um, I'm gonna use a threaded insert to do that. And what I should have done is push this in when this was a rectangle before I cut the taper, because I could have used a clamp to help push this in. So getting those in first, but first, before I do anything, these feet are too long, so I need to... And the reason I put that nut on the end is now I can just unscrew this and that'll fix the thread to make sure that the thread is fine on this because sometimes when you cut a bolt, the thread gets all gummed up and my diamond disc seem to cut a little slower than normal. Yeah, check out the texture and compare that grit versus the end, how it's kind of smooth. I've worn through the diamond pretty well. There's still some life on it. But one of the things I love about these Milner Hoffman discs is if you uh, wear them out, send it to them. They send you a new one for free. It's just part of the deal. Normally, I like to use a clamp to squeeze these in because I can control it, apply steady pressure, etc. cetera. Um, I kind of missed that window. So I've got my little thing made up to give me some standoff. And since I missed the boat on the clamp, I'm gonna use brute force and ignorance instead. So let's get this seated. And prayer, lots of prayer that I don't destroy what I've spent two weeks working on. Okay, I think it's set. There we go. I think it's fully seated. So yeah, if you don't have a table saw, you could use like an anvil or something like that to hammer on instead, but I've got a table saw, so I don't know why I need one of those. All right, <clears throat> so my concrete floor actually works a little bit better. Okay, now onto the second thing. I don't have a way to attach the top to the base. I'm gonna use these Z-clips from Rockler again. I use them several times, I like them, but I need a slot to put these in. And because the tabletop will be expanding this direction, I need a slot wider than this fastener so it can slide with the table. Yeah, I used to cut those little slots with a biscuit joiner. Works really well, but I don't have that anymore because that's the only thing I used it for. So instead I've got an eighth inch bit in my trim router and I did some test pieces and I've got this dialed into the right depth and the fence to the right distance. So I just need to mark my left and right limits on my pieces. These brackets are five eighths of an inch and this wood in a moisture change of about 4% across the year, which is pretty normal in a climate controlled house. Um, across the distance between these two points, which is about 14 inches, will expand a little over an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with a one inch wide um, slot. So it has three eighths of an inch, even though it's only gonna move about an eighth, that just gives a little bit of breathing room. And remember, I don't have to worry about the total width of expansion of the board, which is wider than this, only the amount of expansion between the two attachment points, because I really don't care beyond that what's happening with the wood. was fairly annoyed when I was having to tape all these and then figure out what to do with the pieces while the finish cured. But uh, I'm about to be really glad I went through that pain, I think. Just hope pulling all this tape off isn't as tedious as putting it on was, but it shouldn't be. Anyway, let's, uh, let's speed up through this. Okay, I've uh, <laughs> continued to prepare in an attempt to just delay this as long as possible. And it's, it's time, time to glue.
also I did a stupid, I, uh, I did a Caleb and I came out here to check on this and I dropped something and made a lot more work. Now remember this has been finished sanded, finished, buffed, glued together, everything. First thing I'm going to do is sand back the finish. And I really don't want to sand much of the wood because I'm going to try to recover those fibers. Just want to get the finish off. Feather it in. I got a wet cloth, I'm gonna set it on my dent and iron it a little bit. All right, not quite, even closer. Try a little more. Okay, there's still a little bit. That is significantly better though. Might be all we can really get. Let's try over here. Much better. This spot probably came back the best. So. This one had some severed fibers and there's not a great way to fix that. I could try some wood filler, but I'm afraid the color difference would just highlight it more. So I sanded it a little bit before and that helped a bit, but yeah, I think that's what we can do. And now the real heartbreaker, I sanded on it quite a bit, but I don't want to go too far because then we'll just have a noticeable divot. So, hmm. Yeah, this one might be worth trying to do a little bit more on. Okay, so I'm trying to just take very shallow passes and just smooth this out. Then I'll sand any issues I have. Can't say it's as good as new, but uh, it's a lot better than it was. It's a good shape as it's gonna get, so let's put the base on the top. All right, got some Z clips from Rockler, and the table's gonna move this way, so I'll make sure these are set in the middle. And using some Power Pro screws here.
on the sides because the table's moving this way. I don't want to jam it all the way in. And give it some room to move in and out. There's one other thing I want to do to this table to make it a little more special for the people it's going to and recognize all the companies that have supported this project and making it happen. Well, my battery almost made it, but there we go. I like this, looks good. It's always nice to have something that's, you know, customized for you. So excited to flip this thing over and show you guys. That's gonna be next week when I take this to the family it's going to. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the notify bell so YouTube lets you know when that video comes out so you can get the, the big reveal. Thanks to Power Pro for sponsoring this episode of the big build off. And uh, I'm always a fan of brands that like go the extra mile when, when they send stuff out. Like it's a pretty sweet little package. Anyways, I hope you learned something, were inspired or at least entertained. And until next time, make time to make something.